time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, coming at you with a vlog update of what's happened over the last couple of days. It has not been pretty. Now, if you guys follow me over on the Twitter sphere or on Instagram, you know that I ran into a data loss issue. Basically, it all started when I was reviewing an adapter to go from DisplayPort 1.4 to HDMI 2.0 created by Club 3D. And I will have a link to that in the video description. Unfortunately, I didn't get to finish the product review and this video is gonna tell you why. Now, I still fully intend on finishing that product review once I get back on my feet. But the gist of it is, while I was doing that review, I ran into some critical problems with the NVIDIA drivers on Windows 10. They were causing all kinds of conflicts and issues. I couldn't get all the screens on. I couldn't get NVIDIA surround enabled. So I went through the process of rolling those drivers back on Windows 10 until I could get back to the Microsoft Basic Display Adapter, which is a total pain in the ass in Windows 10. You basically have to go through and disable the Windows update driver update stuff. Then you have to one by one pull each driver out because it keeps restoring the previous version like you're rolling back when you're uninstalling. It's very, very different than the experience was in Windows 8 and Windows 7. So it kind of caught me off guard. Well, finally, somebody recommended a program to me called DDU, which is Display Driver Uninstaller, and it worked absolutely fantastically. And I'll have a link also in the video description to that, as well as everything else that I talk about in this video. But that program effectively got me back to the Microsoft Display Adapter, and I was able to reboot the computer and come up in the most basic display mode. Well, this whole time while I'm doing this, I'm also over on Twitter showing you guys what's going on, posting pictures to Instagram like I do. Anytime I shoot a video, I'm constantly posting pictures in real time of me shooting the video to Instagram so that you guys can kind of like come along with me on the journey and then see the final product. Well, a person who shall remain nameless, you know who you are, suggested that I should update the BIOS on my motherboard because they caught a screenshot that I had posted to Instagram that clearly showed that I had an old BIOS version. It was actually the BIOS that was deployed on the machine when I took delivery of it from Puget Systems in 2015. Well, he was right. My BIOS was out of date, but there was no real reason for me to update the BIOS other than to get the new shiny number. Like none of the fixes or anything that are in the change log were like game changing things to me. And rule number one, you never update your BIOS unless it's got something you need because inevitably you will always run into some kind of problem. Well, anyways, against my better judgment, my OCD kicked in and I went and downloaded the new BIOS and I installed that BIOS on the machine. And immediately when I booted the system, I had no boot drive, the system wasn't working, and I realized that I forgot to back up my BIOS settings. Now, I actually have a server motherboard in my computer, and if you've ever seen the BIOS on a server motherboard, it's actually quite verbose compared to your regular run-of-the-mill gaming motherboard settings. Well, once I got the system booting and I got the RAID reconfigured, I had a degraded volume. Degraded. Now, for those of you guys that don't know what a RAID is, it basically stands for Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disk. At least that's what it used to stand for, I think. Well, in a nutshell, I have four one terabyte drives that are all configured in a RAID 0 configuration through striping, which means every time I write to the drives, it writes to all four drives simultaneously a small quarter of that data. And effectively, you get you know, a massive jump in performance. I mean, you can get as much as four times the performance of a single drive. Now, the problem is if any drive fails, you lose all your data. So this is a drive that obviously needed to be backed up and therein lies my biggest mistake. Now this four terabyte volume or like 3.6 terabytes formatted actually had all of my Adobe Premiere projects on it for this YouTube channel, had all of my video footage, all of my audio files, my intro, my outro, all my compositions, all my settings, everything. And about a bajillion other pieces of data that I can't even remember what all was on the drive and I lost it all. Now I'm gonna tell you guys how, and it was through a series of very, very stupid mistakes I made, starting with updating the BIOS. Had I never updated the BIOS, none of these problems would have happened to me. All right, so once I booted the box and I got into the Intel RAID management software, I could clearly see that one of the drives was not in the array, only three of the drives showed up in the array and one was booted out. So I immediately jumped to the internet, went to Intel's forum and looked through there, and the first thing I see is a ton of people are having this problem after a BIOS upgrade. And Intel's official stance on this is, we don't have the ability to add the drive back to the array once it's been punted out. And Intel won't give any more information than that, at least in the forum that I was reading. So I finally went out of the Intel forum, searched for some other data abroad, and I also uh, told you guys what happened on Twitter, and people started flooding in with ideas. 
Well, instead of being the smart guy that I should have been and actually analyzing each one of these methods for pros and cons and figuring out what the best way is to get my you know, critical data back, I decided to just try these things all one by one. So the first person says, go ahead and delete the RAID volume, uh, create a new RAID volume that's the exact same as the old volume with the exact same settings. The problem was I deleted the array and I didn't look at the settings beforehand. So I didn't know what the cluster size was. I didn't know the order the drives were in. So I tried a whole bunch of different combinations of the drives and I couldn't, when I created the volume, the data wasn't there. Well then after doing some more reading, I figured out that the data doesn't show up there unless you actually go get a program called Test Disk, or there's actually quite a few programs out there that recover the partition once you've created the array because it all comes down to how metadata is stored on the stripe across all four drives. So like a complete and total dumbass, before I get to the test disk step, which would have saved my life, would have just automatically got everything back and I'd be cool. What do I go and do? I go and create a new RAID volume with the disks in the wrong order. And then I create a new NTFS partition to use a program called Recova to get my data back. Now I've used Recova before, so I was actually pretty confident in it. But the problem is because I created the new volume and the drives were in the wrong order, the data was striped incorrectly and Recova just found a bunch of garbage essentially. So at this point I realized my mistake. So I went ahead and deleted the NTFS volume. I went back, killed the array, recreated the array in the proper order, at least what I was pretty sure the proper order was by looking at past screenshots that I've taken of the array, which I should have done in the first place. But the problem was at that point, the damage was already done. When I created the NTFS partition in the wrong order, not only did it overwrite the RAID configuration, it also overwrote the file system in a different configuration. You know, this is very, very complicated and technical, but in a nutshell, I completely messed up. At that very moment, I realized that I lost all of my data and all of my projects, my intros, my outros, all my Adobe Premiere settings, pretty much everything that I need to make a video for you guys. Now you guys kept making suggestions and I kept trying different programs. I'll even put a list of all the programs that I tried down in the video description because I was just throwing Hail Marys left and right trying to get my data back. And one person came back and mentioned a program that they thought might actually work. They said worked when nothing else worked. And that program was called RStudio. Now I go download this RStudio program and it says that it needs to create bootable media. So to me, I'm like, okay, this is awesome. All the other programs just ran in Windows. This one actually boots off its own media. So it's probably a lower level access to the device. So it pops up and it says, you need a USB thumb drive to create a bootable device to get all your data back. I'm like, all right, awesome. Find a USB device, find a USB device. I grab the first one I see on my desk which is my Vision Tech 512 gigabyte uh, portable SSD. This thing is really fast too. So I pop it in the computer and it pops up on the screen. And you know what I see? And this is after like two days of just panicking and freaking out. It has my current Adobe Premiere project on it with all my music files, all my graphics, my follow me on Twitter overlay, my outro, and the project with all my settings in it on here. And the reason it's on here is because when I went to Disney World, I loaded all that stuff on this USB thumb drive before I went down there in case I had to make a video while I was down in, in Anaheim, California. So the bad part is I still lost four terabytes of data. I lost a lot of 3D models. I lost a lot of source code and all that stuff should have been backed up, guys. I'm a complete idiot here. I have a Synology NAS that I reviewed that I set up and I even set up the backup for my OS partition, but I never set up a backup for my RAID partition. And I meant to, I just never got around to it. And of course now I am paying the ultimate price for it. And that is I'm still every day realizing what data I really lost. But the good news is even though I lost all my footage for the last six months for my YouTube videos, the raw footage that is, and I lost all the project files for those, I still have my main template for creating videos. And that is the only reason I'm creating this video right now and getting it uploaded instead of trying to fudge around and figure out Adobe Premiere and all my layouts all over again. It's been a hell of an adventure. So guys, the moral to this story is if you ever have a RAID and you update the BIOS and you're using the onboard Intel RAID controller or actually any RAID controller for that matter, it's just the Intel one has the crappiest software options out of all of them for recovery, don't panic. There are tons and tons of options out there to actually recover your data. But the things you don't want to do is don't create a new partition. Don't create a new RAID volume unless you do it the exact same as the original RAID volume that was on those drives. And that's down to everything. The cluster size, uh, the, the uh, order that the drives are in, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. 
make damn sure you get it absolutely perfect because all it takes is screwing up once deploying a file system in the wrong order and the damn thing's corrupted. I tried doing deep scans with everything and it was just finding like JPEGs that were like three terabytes in size. You could tell that the data was so badly corrupted it couldn't figure out how to make heads or tails of it. Now as a last ditch option, if those programs don't get you your data back, you can always send your drives off to a data recovery specialist or actually use some services that are online where you can run their scanner utility and they'll go through the data and figure out how to best recover it remotely. Those options were all available to me, but I got impatient and it bit me in the ass and I lost a lot. A matter of fact, the, the most stressful thing about all this, I don't understand just what I've lost yet. I'm pretty sure I lost some pictures of my son. I'm pretty sure that I lost some family vacation stuff. I'm pretty sure that I lost a lot more than just some Adobe Premiere projects because there's quite a bit of folders on that drive. But at the end of the day, it was pure dumb luck that I had my project laying around to save my ass. Um, but I'm pretty much making this video to one, show you guys that yeah, I'm human, I still make mistakes. Even though I know I should have waited, I should have been more analytical, I should have done more research, I didn't and it screwed me. And I don't want the same thing to happen to you guys. I'm hoping that somebody that finds this video is in a similar predicament to me and actually now has the, the, the smarts and intelligence to actually go and research it and do things in the proper order instead of just chucking things at it until all your data is corrupted and you realize, damn it, I could have got it all back, but I'm just too deep. Also, at first I was pretty heartbroken when I lost the data, but another thing that I realized, it gives me an opportunity to kind of start clean. Even though I have my main Adobe Premiere project, I'm actually gonna do some work to start over again and go take some courses over on Lynda and try to bone up on my video editing. And I wanna set things up in such a way that everything that I'm editing is being mirrored in real time off to my NAS, and some of the more sensitive stuff is actually also being pushed off to cloud storage is a third option, because at the end of the day, this is my business, this is what I do for a living, this is what I'm passionate about, and I can't afford to be losing data. Data is my business, video is my business, audio is my business. If all that stuff just gets deleted and lost, that puts me in a pretty compromising position. Now, luckily I have an archive of all my YouTube videos that are downloaded, so had I needed to rebuild the channel or something like that, I do have the edited videos. I just don't have the unedited videos, which means later on I can't take those little segments and move them over and go find outtakes and make outtakes videos. Those are all things I had plans to do, and those are all just down the crapper because I don't have that raw footage anymore. All right, guys, well, I wanted to keep this vlog pretty short and just let you guys know what is going on. Uh, if you saw my video where I just did some upgrades on the bases for my 50-inch monitors, go check that out if you haven't seen it. But I am doing a lot of things in the Nerd Cave right now. Unfortunately, because I got side-blasted by this data loss issue, I've spent two full days just working on data recovery, and now I'm working on actually just getting my video drivers all back and installed properly and getting Windows 10 to work the way that I want. And like I said, I'm working on some of the software issues with Adobe Premiere now so that I can do a better job for you guys moving forward. But I'm looking forward to doing two product reviews this weekend. I'm not going to tell you guys what they are, but they're both equally cool. And I'm also going to get back to some 3D printing and stuff like that because I still have my first Delta from CD CNC. I still have my Ultimaker 2. I have the CreatorBot 3D and I have the Pegasus uh, SLS printer from full, full Spectrum Laser, which can do 10 micron printing using a resin. So I have a ton of stuff in the queue, but everything has just been kind of falling apart for the last week, guys, other than bike riding. I've been having a blast riding my uh, my new Rad Rover from Rad Power Bikes. That thing's been absolutely amazing. As a matter of fact, I've got 90 plus miles on it now, so I'm going to take it in for a tune-up so that I can keep riding it. Um, because if I don't get it tuned up, obviously I'm going to have some wobble in the wheels and stuff like that, and I don't want that. I want to get that all squared away. But I'll have a link to that video also down in the video description. I want to thank each and every one of you for your ongoing support to the channel. I'm glad that you guys enjoy what I do so that I can keep doing it. I hope you like these vlog updates. If you do, please let me know down in the comments or slap a like on this video. If this thing saved your life in a data recovery circumstance, please let me know. Come over and tweet me. I am at Barnacles on Twitter. Also, let me know in the comments down below because if I know this stuff is helping other people not make the stupid ass mistakes that I do, I'm more than happy to keep making them. Also, I do have plans to do some more Codegasm videos. You gotta give me guys a couple more weeks. You, you just gotta give me some time because I have to get my dev environment set back up on my box. Like I said, having some software issues. I am gonna get that all squared away. I know you guys are dying for those Codegasm episodes. And I also wanna do some Jerry Rig videos. I got some cool Jerry Rig videos coming up with some lighting changes that I'm doing in the cave and some surprise things that I'm doing in the Nerd Cave bedroom that you guys are probably gonna think that I'm completely Looney Tunes for doing. But it's gonna be cool anyways. Until next time. Don't be a dumbass and delete all your data. Just don't. It's, it's, it's not good times. Whoa!
see Seth back there? Someone got me in the eye. Oh no! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.